14 is over. And it was an interesting year. A lot happened. And in fact, if you want to know what was the most popular or most interesting event in 2014, all you would have to do is, well, just turn your computer on or open your phone and type in Google and see what was the most searched thing in 2014. Any guess what the most searched thing in 2014 was? Ebola. Not Ebola. Nope. What? Taylor Swift? She didn't even make the top 10. Robin Williams. Robin Williams was, Robin Williams' death was the most uh, top Google search of 2014. Followed by the World Cup. Come on, people, soccer fans. Uh, the World Cup, then e Ebola, then the Malaysian airline uh, that went missing, and it's still missing. Remember, I think CNN uh, played that up for the longest time. But any guess what the fifth most popular search was? <laughs> Death? Anything? You forgot? <laughs> well, it, I'm, you know, it's probably one of those things that you would forget about because it sort of took the U.S. and the world by, by storm. And it happened this past summer. Do you remember that thing called the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge? <laughs> remember that? The ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. What an idea. You challenge people to uh, either give, donate money for ALS Lou Gehrig's disease research, or you take a bucket of ice water and toss it over your head. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, first off, earlier last year, Carrie and I had donated money to ALS because one of Carrie's co-workers, uh, family members, died of ALS. So I figured I was safe uh, when that happened. However, any member uh, in here who uses social media of any type would know that nobody was safe with the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. And I was hoping, I mean, I was having fun watching all of these uh, the videos. My favorite were these nuns in Ireland. I don't know if you caught that one. They, where they were just, uh, they, each one kept going, putting water over the other, and they, uh, they screamed like little girls, and it was just, they were in their full habits. Uh, you know, I, I actually, I really love the one with uh, uh, President Bush. That was a, a pretty good one, too. Um, but unfortunately, or fortunately, two of my social media friends uh, threw down and challenged me to the ice bucket challenge. One is a priest in uh, the Diocese of Pittsburgh, Father Jim Simons. Jim, you are going to pay for this. <laughs> and the other was a friend in Newcastle, Chris Bell, and they both challenged me to do it. Well, as I am one never to miss up a good challenge and opportunity, I was happy to take part in that. And, and so it was an August day, a really hot day. I took the dog for a three mile walk and I came back and I got the phone ready to take my, my video and I filled up the bucket with water and a lot of ice and, and I said what I was gonna do and then I took that uh, ice and water and tossed it all over my head and oh, <laughs> it was freezing. How stupid was I? I mean, you know, it's like being, being uh, like tossed into a frozen lake. It's like those idiots who jump in on January 1st and do the polar bear plunges. <laughs> Anybody in here do that? Uh, I, I happen to know somebody who goes to 6 o'clock who does. So, uh, but you know, it, it, it was so cold. Instant, it was a bone chilling cold that just shook me up to the core. And I was like, ah, 
You know, and why would anyone put themselves through through that? Yeah, it's for a good cause, but it was really stupid if you think about it. You know, if I'm gonna use water, let me have at least a nice warm hot bath or hot shower or a good nice hot, you know, uh, a, a hot tub that's nice and warm, but who in their right mind would put a bunch of ice water over themselves? Stupid. You know, and because when we use water, we use water rightly. <laughs> we use water all the time. Maybe well, we might drink water with ice in it, right? I like a nice cold glass of, of, of water. Now, well, you're, I assume you're bathing in water? Yes, please. <laughs> I, I, I hope. <laughs> uh, you know, I, you, know you, you use water to boil and cook things in, right? You, you use water to wash your clothes. Wash your car. I mean, water is used to water your gardens. I mean, we use water constantly. Water is part of our life. It's cleansing. It gives new life. It gives new hope. You know, and we even use water in the church, right? We use it on on uh, Monday, Thursday, when the priest washes the feet of the people. We use water, of course, in baptism. And here, of course, in, you know, as good Episcopalians, we have a nice little font that we bring up here, and we have a beautiful picture, and, and we make sure it's filled with nice, warm uh, tap water. Uh, because, you know, that way, when uh, it gets time for the baptism, we don't want the baptized to, you know, have that shout of scream about, ah, how cold it is. You know, and if you've ever tried to bathe a baby with cold water, you know it's not a good thing. So we want to make it as easy as possible. However, I can't help but think that we're doing it all wrong with baptism. See, today we remember Jesus' baptism by John in the River Jordan. Now, the River Jordan, if you ever get the privilege of going there, it really isn't that big, I and mean, it's actually quite icky. It's, uh, it's, it's green, full of algae. Uh, most likely, Jesus was baptized in a, one of the pool, there's a pool, they had pools off, that the water would go out and we baptize them. But it probably wasn't the most warmest water in the world, and, and the baptism that Jesus had was what most baptisms in the early church have been full immersion. Well, now, if you go into a Baptist church today, what do they do? They do the full immersion of, of, of the water. Now, the earliest church, in the earliest church, the full immersion in water was preferred. In fact, the earliest catechism that we know of is something called the Didache, D-I-D-A-C-H-E. It's a catechism. It was, uh, it's the catechism of the 12 apostles. It was written in for late first century, early second century, and quoted in uh, the third century. But it gives very specific instructions about baptism. And it says at the beginning that the church should baptize individuals in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Okay? In running water, if possible. So, like, in a river, in the ocean, you know, full immersion to go underneath. But it recognizes that that might not be possible. So it says, number two, if that's not available, then you're to baptize the person with cold water. With cold water. And if cold water is not available, then you can use warm water. And if all else is available, so you can do what we do and just pour water over the head three times. And that's what it says. But I find it interesting that the full immersion and or the second option is all about being cold. That the baptism isn't is something nice and warm and fuzzy. It's something that's meant to shake us up. Just like that ice bucket challenge did when I did it to me. You know, if you think about what baptism really is all about is 
baptism is the entrance right into the church. It's when God claims you and me as God's own. Just as in Jesus and his baptism, that the heavens open and Jesus saw the dove descend the Holy Spirit and says that you are my beloved and you I am well pleased. Baptism is the beginning of ministry. It's the beginning of what you and I are to do. And baptism, it's meant to shake us up. In fact, I really start thinking, maybe we just need to have a big baptismal pool full of ice every time we have baptisms here. <laughs> okay? I think we would get the point that baptism is meant to shake us up, to stir us up to get us charged and motivated. Because when we get cold, all of a sudden, our adrenaline gets going. We do everything we're supposed to do to try to immediately go and do the next thing. Often it's trying to get warm as possible. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he immediately went out and started doing ministry. But I think for us, we often think that, well, you know what? Baptism's it. We're baptized, we're done, we don't have to do anything else. In fact, parents even call me and say, we want to have our baby done. <laughs> In other words, we want our baby baptized. <laughs> Uh, what's the point? Are you going to want to do? Put it in the oven? <laughs> no. I'd rather put the baby in a really cold bit of bath water so we can really understand what it is about. I think we take our baptism so much for granted, partly because for the most of us, we don't remember it. And I love baptizing babies and will continue to baptize babies because I want to offer them that immediate gift of God's love early on. But we miss something when we aren't baptized later in our life. Liz, you were, but we had nice warm water, right? And cold room. Cold room. <laughs> <laughs> baptism, our baptism is meant to be a daily challenge and opportunity for you and me to live our life the way that God wants us to live. Now in a moment we're going to be renewing our own baptismal covenant. We say our baptismal covenant every time there's a baby baptized or an adult baptized here in the church. And in that baptismal covenant it tells us what it means for us to, to be Christians. And on this day, this 11th day of January in 2015, as you read and answer and respond to those questions, I would like you and I challenge you today to take part in the baptism challenge. I want you to be involved in the baptism challenge. No, you don't need to be rebaptized. We don't do that. But every day when you wake up and you go to the mirror and, and you're getting yourself ready, take some water and make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and challenge yourself to live the life that God wants you to live it that day. And for each one of us, it might be some different things. Because that's what our baptismal covenant is all about. The different things we all have to work on. Maybe you're just starting now to come back to church. Maybe that should be your commitment. To really work this coming year of going forward, coming, being fed. Maybe you haven't cracked the Bible open, well, ever. Well, maybe you could start by maybe just reading the Gospel of Mark or reading some of the Psalms. It's just start studying about that or taking our forward day by day that we have. Maybe you're really struggling with something that is separating yourself from God right now, an addiction of some kind. Maybe 
your baptismal challenge will be you're going to work at that, recognize what's going on in your life, to know that you're helpless, and ask God and others for help. And if you screw up, ask for forgiveness. Maybe you're holding a grudge towards somebody and that no matter what, you will not forgive so-and-so because of what they did to you. Maybe God won't forgive you. Maybe that's what you have to work on. Maybe you think you're better than everybody else. Maybe it's to start to recognize the face of God in all people. Maybe it's to work for justice and peace, to respect the dignity of every human being. Our baptismal challenge that God has asked us to take is meant to make us energized. It's meant to wake us up. It's meant to chill us to the bone in order that we might warm up and go and serve. It's not an easy challenge. But it was a gift already given to you and me for some of you a long time ago, like Nancy. <laughs> it's been a while, Nancy, since I've been able to. <laughs> and for others, it's coming up like Julia and Jason's baby is going to be next month. But no matter when it will be, it's a daily gift, a daily opportunity, and a daily challenge. Imagine what your year will be like, what our year as a community will be like if every day we partake in that baptismal challenge. That we remember that we are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To remember that we are children of God, loved and special. And in the end, when that day shall come and we slip from this life to the next, we can stand before the glory and love of God. And God can look at you with all love and say, you are my beloved. I'm very well pleased. Amen.